Hello, everybody, and welcome back. This is Michael Roger. This is class number two for the Attract More Business Using Law of Attraction. And for those of you that are listening to the MP3 files, ideally you would have completed your clarity through contrast that you were working on, whether it was for your ideal client or your ideal referral or your ideal uh, contract or your ideal engagement or your ideal sales meeting. And if you just did your ideal business, my hunch is that you'll find things within that that you need to drill down a little bit. So if you did your ideal business, you said, well, you know, I'd like to attract my ideal referral. Well, what is your ideal referral? So you would do a spreadsheet for that or a clarity through contrast for that as well. So ideally you would have completed your homework. What I would like to do is kind of recap what you learned so far just to keep us up to speed. It's going to take two or three minutes, so kind of sit back and relax and what we've been talking about is that at the bottom line, it's all about vibes. And vibes are simply moods or feelings that we give off. You know, we talked about how we can actually feel somebody's negative vibe or we can feel somebody's positive vibe. And every mood or feeling that we have, every mood or feeling that we have, have causes us to offer a vibration. If you went to the dictionary and you highlighted every feeling word, they would end up in one of those two columns, negative vibes or positive vibes. So the good news, there's only two kinds of vibes that we have to remember. There's thousands of words that we use to describe these moods or feelings and these vibrations, but there's only two kinds, either negative or positive. And the vibration that you're sending is being matched and responded to by law of attraction, which is a science. So you offer a vibration, law of attraction matches it. You offer a negative vibration or a positive vibration, law of attraction matches it. And what's important to know, and what was really profound when I learned it, is that law of attraction is obedient. <laughs> it doesn't know, it being the science, it doesn't know whether you want it or don't want it, or whether it's good or bad for you, or whether it's healthy or not healthy. It's obedient. It doesn't decide whether you like it or don't like it. And it's not prejudice, and it doesn't have favoritism. It is obedient. And if you want to know what the vibes are that you're sending off about clients and customers and referrals and sales and sign-ups and so on and business partners. So I wonder what my vibes are that I'm sending off about any of those areas. Well, guess what? You simply need to take a look and see what you're getting. It's a perfect match. Of course, if you like what you're getting, celebrate it. And in the celebration, you'll get more. If you don't like what you're getting, then you know that you can change that experience. You can reset an experience. It's like, hey, I don't like this area of my business. I want to reset it. And, of course, the best way to reset an experience is to reset the vibration. And we learn that to reset a vibration, you simply need to change the words and the thoughts that you're thinking. Then we talked about the formula for deliberate attraction. In other words, I want to be more deliberate in what I attract. You see, law of attractions that work at every moment, including right now, right now, and right now. So let's tap into it. If it's going to give me what I'm vibrating, let's make sure I'm vibrating something that it is that I want. And then we learn that the words don't, not, and no, you know, they're the, they're the culprit right there. They're the three words that make us talk about what we don't want. And as we talk about what we don't want, we get more of it. Mm -hmm. So we learn then when we say, so what do I want? Ah, Because when you go from what you don't want to what you do want, the words change. And when the words change, the vibration changes. And we love that we can only hold one vibration at any time. And as you're holding the new vibration, law of attraction doesn't remember what the other one was. So if you've been having referral uh, issues for five days or 50 years or you've been having sales problems or not getting the right customers and clients, it doesn't matter how long you've had that history. I promise you when you change the vibration, you'll change the results that you're getting. And you change vibration by changing thoughts and words and by eliminating the words don't, not, and no and changing them to so what do I want does just that. Now, back to the formula for deliberate attraction. You know, because law of attraction is a science, there's a formula that we can, uh, we can follow to deliberately attract something. And to be a deliberate attractor means we need to do something deliberately, or it wouldn't be called deliberate attraction. So to deliberately attract, you need to do something deliberately. And that's the formula. That's the three steps. You could call it the three-step formula, the, the three conditions that need to be met. Now, the first step was identify what you want. It sounds pretty easy, but... The truth is we're not good at identifying what we do want, but we're very good at identifying what we don't want. And that's when we learned how to do the clarity through contrast exercise. In other words, 
by observing what you don't want, we got really clear about what we did want. And when we go from what we didn't want to what we do want, the vibration changed. And remember, the more contrast you come up with, the more clarity you'll come up with. The second step that we're going to be talking about tonight is called Give My Desire Attention. Now, if you remember the opening sentence that was the definition of law of attraction, it clearly stated, whatever I give my attention, energy, and focus to. You see, many people are used to doing a list, building a list of what they want in this area and building a list in this area, and then they take the list and then they go tuck it in their sock drawer or they put it on their bulletin board. Is law of attraction checking there? (laughs) No, law of attraction is checking your vibration. You see, all of your goals and dreams and desires aren't in your current vibration. If they were in your current vibration, you'd have them. So I'm going to introduce you to a tool. It's called the Desire Statement, and it's really just a statement or a paragraph that will help you give attention and energy and focus to your desire. Remember, it doesn't matter how you give attention to it. You can visualize You can daydream, you can pretend, you can make a macaroni collage, you can tell ten friends, you can pretend. Would all of those things help you give attention, energy, and focus to your new desire? Yes. Yes, Yes, they would. But I'm going to teach you some, some methodology here where you only use words. Remember how powerful words are. Words carry a vibration. The other reason why I like to teach all these word-related tools is because you could do them anywhere, in a bank lineup, walking down the street, in a restaurant. And we're always using words. We type them, we read them, we hum them, we sing them, we color them, we print them, we write them. Even when we're not doing anything, what are we doing with words? Thinking. We're thinking about them. They're everywhere. So we want to make sure that we have a really good database of good words and There's three of them that we already learned to eliminate, which is the word don't, not, and no, and replace it with so what do we want. That was the first exercise. So we used words to help us identify our desire. Now we're going to use words to help us raise our vibration. And how will you know if this exercise helps you raise your vibration? You'll be able to tell by how. Your feeling? Yes, you'll be able to tell by how you feel. If you feel really good after saying it, it worked. If you, feel, if you don't feel very good by saying it, then it didn't work. So before I introduce you to the desire statement, I want to talk about affirmations. You see, a lot of people would use an affirmation to help them give attention, energy, and focus to what they desire. Does that make sense, why people would do affirmations? Sure. Yes. They want to remind themselves. They want to keep it in their focus. They want to make sure they're present. So let's do an affirmation. So somebody pitch in here and tell me what makes up an affirmation. What are some guidelines? Hmm. It's a statement in the present. Okay, that's important. It's it's stated in the current present tense. And it's something you want. Desire. Yeah. Well, it's not something we want. We always state it as if we have it. So it's it's something we desire, right? We're going to act as if. And it's about us, right? Right. So we say it in the current tense, about us. It's very positive. Right. So here's a, here's a, let's see if this matches the world of affirmations. If I were to say, uh, I have 10 ideal clients, does that, is that an affirmation, a positive affirmation in the affirmation world? No. Uh, Hmm. how come? It's not, it's not specific. Okay, good. So let's say, uh, I have 10 well paying clients. That's my, that's my affirmation. I have 10 well-paying clients. So, you know, is that is that is that what the affirmation world teaches us to say? I think so. Yeah, me too. You know, I have 10 perfect clients. I have a happy relationship. Now, imagine if every morning you get up and you're in the bathroom mirror and you read on the top of your mirror, I have 10 happy, uh, exciting clients. And the little voice in your head says, well... You really only have two, and you don't really like them. <laughs> so now what is the vibration that you're sending? Negative. Negative. And your little voice is saying, well, you don't have ten. You only have two. Who do you think you are? I mean, Betty's the best, and she has eight. Who do you think I am? And all of a sudden, you start that negative spiral. Do you all know what I mean by that? 
Yes. Where one negative thought generates another one, generates, and all of a sudden you're, you know, you're all bummed out and negative. Right. So if we said affirmations, if we, if we affirm something that wasn't true for us, if it's not true for you, how does it feel? It doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. It's negative. It's negative. So this is the reason why affirmations don't work for most people, because they're telling themselves something as if it's true when it's not true. You know, in my book, I have a picture of me when I was bigger or fatter. I was in front of the bathroom mirror, and my affirmation said, I have a happy, slender body. <laughs> so is that a positive affirmation? <laughs> you bet it is. There is. Yeah. And, you know, I'm standing in the mirror in my underwear thinking, well, no, you don't. <laughs> You know, your dad. That was really you in that picture. Yeah, that was really me. <laughs> my my dad's big. My family's big. I can't even see my feet. I'm wearing a size bigger than I wore two months ago. I'm so overweight, and all of a sudden, all of those thoughts are generating what kind of vibration? Negative. 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 What's law of attraction responding to? My thought, or how I feel about the thought? How you feel. Okay. I'd like you to write this down. Law of attraction responds to. How I feel about what I say and how I feel about what I think. Can you say that again? Certainly. Law of attraction responds to how I feel about what I say and how I feel about what I think. So as I'm standing in the bathroom mirror telling myself I have a happy, slender body, that is not the vibration that I'm sending. So my friends, of course, would say, well, say it a thousand times. <laughs> so note to self, it doesn't feel any better if you say it a thousand times. <laughs> See, the key to these statements that we're making is that the words need to be congruent with the feelings. I'd like you to write that down. The words need to be congruent with the feelings. Just to make sure we all understand, what are some other words for congruent? Equal to. Equal to, matching, same, same as. as. Yeah. yeah, very good. So if I were to say I have a happy slender body and it felt good, that would be okay. Now, who can explain to me why some why affirmations some people's affirmations work for them? Hmm. Because it's in line with what they're experiencing. Okay. What's in line? Their 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 the vibration. vibration. The vibration, yeah. So maybe somebody can say I have a happy, slender body, and it feels good for them. Boom. Did the words equal the vibrations? Yes. Positive words, positive vibrations. Now, I remember in the early 1990s when I first discovered, you know, um, the whole affirmation world, and I bought a little box of um, affirmation cards. They were quite beautiful. And on the box it said, these will make you feel good. And I said, whew, I'm all over that. <laughs> I'm buying those. So I took them home, and I start looking at one card at a time, and, and my little vibrational meter, what is your vibrational meter, by the way? How you feel. How you feel. My vibrational meter, if you can imagine, it's pointing to the negative side and positive side, which is really my feelings. I'd look at a card, my vibrational meter would go, ee, I'd look at the next card, ee, ee, ee. I was thinking, I don't like these at all. I remember one of them being, I love my neighbors. <laughs> so when does that feel good? When you do love your yeah. neighbors. All my family relationships are harmonious. <laughs> when does that feel good? Mm. And they are. Harmonious. Yes. I love my thighs. When does that feel good? <laughs> Probably never. So, you, so I kept, yeah, that's what somebody said before. I said, <laughs> no, well, never. Women. Yeah. So next time you read an affirmation, use your vibrational meter to tell you how it feels. Of course, you all know that I'm, I'm highlighting what isn't working, and of course I'm going to give you a technique to make it work. But my point here is, is that some people, when they, when they birth a desire, they say, hey, I'm going to use affirmations, and my affirmation is going to help me include it in my vibration, but it doesn't. It almost does the opposite. So I'm going to teach you, um, well, first I'm going to show you the correction for affirmations. I don't really call them affirmations, but it's more of a desire statement or a statement. So I'd like you to write this down. I am in the process, or process, depending on what country you're in. <laughs> I'm in the process of attracting my ideal blank. So for us, we're talking about business. 
I'm in the process of attracting my ideal client. I'm in the process of attracting my ideal referral. And, of course, you've already identified your ideal referral in the last. So when you say that, you know what it is because you just did it in step one. Now, there's a word in that sentence that's pretty anti-affirmation. What's that word? Process. Process. I mean, I think they even have a double underline. Don't use the word process. But we learned tonight that if, yeah, they say don't use the word process. State it as if you have it. Well, we learned tonight if you tell yourself you have it and you don't, you're not telling yourself the truth. And if you're not telling yourself the truth, you're offering a negative vibration. Mm -hmm. But here's the key to the word process or process. When does it start? Tomorrow at 3? Right now. Right Right now. now. Matter of fact, the very minute that you talk about something, did you give it attention, energy, and focus? Sure. The very minute you put it on a yellow sticky, did you give it attention, energy, and focus? Yes, sure. Yes. The very minute you talk about it, you put it on a sticky, you tell somebody else, you daydream, you put it on a project plan, you write it on your whiteboard, the very minute that you do any of that, you just set the energy in motion. Ooh, I'd like one of those. Boom, you just set the energy in motion. You write down your goal. You build a list. You talk about what you want. You set, See, we're really good at setting the energy in motion. So when you say, I'm in the process of attracting my ideal client, is that true or false? True. Sure. It's true. Based on that, you understand giving it attention, energy, and focus does that. Can you feel the difference in the sentences? Sure. Uh, You know, for me, I have a happy, slender body to I'm in the process of attracting a happier, slender body. It's like, oh, I feel so so much better. (sighs) Now, here's the other important thing, is that nobody outside of yourself can tell you how you should feel about an affirmation. You know, my, I have a little story, you know, Jim Carrey, the tall, skinny Canadian. Mm-hmm. So imagine Jim Carrey and me, the not-so-tall, skinny Canadian, are standing beside each other, and both of us at the same time opened up a card and read, I have a happy, slender body. And above us, we have like an applause meter or a vibrational meter. Would our meters be registering the same vibration? No, no. No, because my meter would say, well, no, you don't. And his would be, yeah, my, I have a happy, slender body. But do you think people that have happy, slender bodies have that written on their bathroom mirror? No. No. I don't think so. Well, I'm probably, I'm quite sure, certain they don't. So when someone tells you you should say this to feel this way, well, first go tell them to mind their own vibration. <laughs> And only you can tell how it feels. So when I'm telling you to reframe it to say, I'm in the process of attracting my ideal body, I don't want you to tell me it feels good because I told you it could feel good. Ideally, you would feel that difference and say, you know what, this does feel better. And it feels better because it's what? True. It's true. Write this down. If it's true for me, it feels good. Mm. If it's not true for me, it doesn't feel good. That didn't take rocket science to figure that out, but boy, it sounds good and it makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, we're on step two. Step two is give your desire, attention, energy, and focus. So we're not going to use affirmations to do that, <laughs> unless you use the corrected formula. And what we're going to use is the desire statement. And you can all, you know, can you hear the difference between an affirmation and a desire? You know, an affirmation is something that you affirm in your what? Where do you affirm an affirmation? In your head. Oh. And where does the desire reside? Emotional. It's emotional. It's a feeling. So let's play in that area. That's what we're in the business of doing. To be a deliberate attractor, you need to be a deliberate offerer of feelings. So I want you to take a blank piece of paper and go to the very top of the page and write... Desire statement. And I'm going to give you the beginning paragraph and the ending paragraph. So the beginning paragraph is, I'm in the process of attracting all that I need to do Know, that's K-N-O-W, and have Mm -hmm. to attract my ideal blank. Somebody read that back for me. This is 
Annie. I'm in the process of attracting all that I need to do, know, and have to attract my ideal blank. Okay. And we're we're playing in customers and clients and so on. Now go to the bottom of the page. I'm going to give you the ending paragraph. And the ending paragraph is, Law of Attraction is unfolding and orchestrating my desire. Law of Attraction is orchestrating and unfolding my desire. Anybody get a relief knowing that? Yes. It's like, oh, you know, I don't have to do anything? It's like, no, <laughs> it's not your job. You know, as some of you have been manifesting, you know, you've been studying law of attraction and you've been manifesting already, I'm quite certain that when you manifest your desire, if I were to ask you, did it come from a source or a resource that you thought it would come from, what do most people say? Not in a million, a million years. Not in a million years. I would have never guessed that I was going to attract my next client from here to here to here to here to here. So your your work here is not to figure it out. Let law of attraction figure it out. It's not your job. As soon as you tell yourself, as soon as you tell law of attraction that it needs to come from over there, if law of attraction had a voice, it would say, hey, well, what about over here? What about over here? Matter of fact, whenever you catch yourself trying to figure it out, simply say, let law of attraction figure it out. I want you to write that down, just anywhere in the margin. Let law of attraction figure it out. Some of you might have heard the expression, get out of your own way. <laughs> I never really knew what that meant, so I'm going to take that expression and make it make sense for me. Get out of my own way means um, I'm, you know, I need, to, I need to have it come a way that I never even thought of. Instead of my way, get out of my way doesn't have to be my way. I'm not attached to where I get my next speaking engagement. I'm not attached where you're not attached where you get your next client. Do you guys care where you get your next ideal client? No. 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 As long as it's a vibrational match to your ideal client. So who does that feel good for to say that when you say, who feels good saying, let law of attraction figure it out and tell me more about that? Anybody have a sensation when they say that? Yeah, like take the bricks off your shoulder. Yeah. Like it just puts it out there. Okay, good. And you can feel the burden almost, can't you? It's like, right. Whew, I don't have to look after that. Let law of attraction. And I mean, I use. you can even see my hand kind of pushing down. It's like, oh, let law of attraction figure it out. In other words, I'm pushing it out of my way. Right. I'm, I am getting out of my way. It's like I'm pushing myself out of my way. Let law of attraction figure it out. Now, what we're going to do is that I'm going to teach you how to build a paragraph so when you read it, oh, by the way, what's the purpose of the desire statement? Its purpose is to do what? Raise your vibration. Raise your vibration. So when you're done this sentence, how will you know whether it worked or not? By the way you feel. That's right. Your feelings are your indicator all the time. So in the body of this paragraph, I want you to, I'm going to give you three or four sentences, just the beginning of them. And I want you to write this first one. I love knowing that my ideal, and then just go dot, dot, dot. I love knowing that my ideal, next sentence. I love how it feels when, dot, dot, dot. Next sentence. I love it when, oh, I just said that one, right? I must love it when a lot. The next, one, the next one, I'm excited at the thought of. And the next one, I've decided, dot, dot, dot. They all have dots after them, which just means in ex, it's the beginning of the sentence. What was the last one? I've, I've decided. No, you don't have to use all four. I particularly like the first one, and I'm going to explain why. Now, if I were to say, you know, we're going to use some of the examples that we talked about here. Um, I love knowing that my ideal client is a great communicator. I want you to double under, or 
<laughs> that was double underline. I want you to double underline the word ideal. I love knowing my ideal client. Uh, what did I say? Is a great client is a great communicator. Is a great communicator. Now, from that sentence, do you get a sense of whether I have that ideal client or I don't have that ideal client? No. You don't get a sense either way, do you? Uh-uh. Does it allow me to talk does it, does it allow me to include that vibration in my current vibration without saying you don't have that? Sure. Yes, very good. Why? This is a really important sentence. Why does that sentence allow you to state it without having that voice saying, you don't have that? Ideal, by saying my your, ideal. Your ideal one. Perfect. Excellent. My ideal client. My ideal speaking engagement was like last night. My ideal speaking engagement does this. Now, you can't tell whether I have it or don't want it, but the purpose of these sentences is to allow me to articulate my desire so I can include it in my current vibration without that little voice saying, you don't have it. Are you appreciating the emphasis on the word ideal? Yeah. Good. So I'd like to each of you to go through right now is to pick one of the things on your clarity list and just to state that sentence. It it really is. I mean, from an NLP point of view, I could spend another two hours telling you why this sentence works. So remember how powerful So What Do You Want is? Mm -hmm. This is the sister. So I want you to know it really well. So let's hear from each of you. Going back to your list of clarity, what, you know, or even if you have to pretend, using that first sentence. Who would like to go first? Um, I'll go first, Debbie. Thanks, Debbie. I love how it feels when my clients are committed, are committed to me and my project, and they keep, they keep all my appointments. Okay, very good. Now, you're using the second one. I love how it feels. So here's my question. Is it true that you love how it feels when they keep their appointment? Sure. Okay, so there you go. So remember, so, so what's the criteria that we're looking for here? It needs to be what? It needs um, to be good. true. Yeah. So whether you said, I love knowing that my ideal client keeps their appointment, or I love it when they keep their appointment, both of those are true. Right. Okay, next. I love knowing that my clients always show up on time. Ooh, I love knowing that too. I love knowing that my... Now, we want to say your ideal client, right? Did you say that? Yes. Okay, thanks. I love knowing my ideal client. And, you know, I like to put extra emphasis on it for teaching purposes because, you know, that's that means I can keep talking about it. Thanks, Lydia. Next. This is Chris. We'll hear from Annie, then Chris. I love knowing that my ideal business partners love to team up and build their business. Ah, I love knowing that, too. Thanks, Annie. Next. This is Chris. Hey, Chris. I love knowing that my ideal client has disposable income. Mm-hmm. My ideal client does, too. <laughs> Very good, Chris. And Sandy. Um, I love knowing that my ideal client pays up front. Ooh, we love that. We did this exercise last night at a, a, a seminar I did in Calgary for about 125, mostly women. And, uh, boy, we, we, I went to the front of the room and we drew a big flip chart. I had, no, um, not on a flip chart, they had a handout and we did the clarity through contrast. And, boy, with 125 um, entrepreneurs in the room, do you think we were able to build a list of contrast? Oh, yeah. I couldn't stop them. I know. Like, okay, we have enough already. And when we got to the other side, I mean, the whole everyone's physiology changed and the energy changed in the room, and, so was, and they were screaming, "I love this!" and "I love how this feels!" and and uh, it was lots and lots of fun. So these are really significant sentences. Can I get the gal to repeat the one said about her ideal partner? Okay, that was really Annie. Good. Yep. Yeah, Annie. I love knowing that my ideal partner loves to team up and build a business. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Very good. Did we hear from everybody? I think so. Okay, good. Thank you very much, everybody. That was great. So here's your homework, is to build a desire statement. And in the desire statement, you'll have the beginning. You'll take things that you put on your clarity list. You see how each step folds into the next, into the next, into the next? You'll take your clarity statement, and you're going to build a paragraph. 
And, you know, you can use those four sentences. You can use all kinds of different things in there if you want. You can use one of them. You can use all four of them. And then build a sentence. And then I'd actually like you to send it to me. What value would it be for you to even to type it out to send it to me? Give it, it, true. it makes you do it. Yeah. <laughs> and when you're typing it out and you're, you know, because, you know, I really want to see you through the project. So the MP3 folks, you don't have to send me yours. <laughs> I should have made that clear at first. But I want you folks to go through the process. So jotting it down, writing it out, typing it out, editing it, smoothing it out, and kind of read it and test for any little nigglings. What do I mean by that? Nigglings. What's a, what's a niggling? Negative feeling. Uh, a little negative feeling. In other words, if you read it and, you, and there was a, one sentence that goes, e, well, you know what, then, then tweak it up till it feels good. Because the purpose of this desire statement is to help you raise your vibration. And you know that you raise your vibration by how you feel. And the purpose of the statement is to help you include the vibration of the way you want it to be. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about your vibrational bubble. You know, your vibrational bubble, it's, it's you know, I'm kind of making a little joke or a cartoon of it, but it really is this bubble around you, a pretend bubble around you. And imagine it like a, a big fishnet that's going over you. It's a big bubble. And inside this bubble are all of the vibes that you have. It's all the vibes that you're sending, and it's all the vi- it's housing all of your vibrations. So when Law of Attraction is checking to find out the vibration that you're sending, where is it checking? Inside the bubble or outside the bubble? In the bubble. It's checking in the bubble. So maybe not you, but some people we know, they build a list, and then they take the list and they tuck it away. Is Law of Attraction looking in their junk drawer for that list? Oh. No. Is it looking in their sock drawer or on their bulletin board? No. It's not. It's checking your vibration. Now, here's an important question for you to understand as well. This new desire that you have, is it outside your bubble or inside your bubble? Matter of fact, your goals and your dreams and your desires, are they outside your bubble or inside your vibrational bubble? Well, I'll ask a different question. When are they inside your bubble? When you feel it? Yeah, when you feel it. But you see, not but, and, you see, your goals and your dreams and your desires are outside of your current vibration. They're outside of your bubble. How do I know that your dreams and goals are outside of your bubble? They haven't manifested it. I don't have them yet, because if I have them, would I be off, would I have that vibration? Yeah. Yes, I would have the vibration. So as you build this new list, what we need to have to, what we need to do is imagine punching your fist through the bubble and reaching out to the list and pulling the list inside your current vibration. You're actually we actually want to pull the vibration of the list. So now when law of attraction checking checking checking, it's found you offering the vibration of the way you want it to be. And this is important as well. Does law of attraction know how it got into your bubble? Uh-uh. No. So does it, it doesn't know if you were built a desire statement. Would a desire statement help you include the vibration of the way you want it to be inside your current vibration? Sure. Yes, yeah. it would. Now, one of the most uh, popular questions, I'm, I'm, I mean, I literally get emails every day and, and uh, mostly of, you know, thanks and congratulations and success stories. And they often start off with saying, you'll never guess what. <laughs> you'll never believe this. <laughs> well, you know what? I always believe them and I always, and I'm never surprised. I'm always delighted to hear the stories. But one thing that I didn't uh, talk about in my book, and when I update my book, or I'm doing that now, I've, I've included this piece, because people will say, should I read my desire statement every day? That's well, you know, you What's that? That's a good thing to include. It would. It would help you include it. Right. But some people get bored about it after a while. Right. So one of the things that we're going to talk about in the next class, which is around allowing, is that I'm going to teach you to start celebrating things that show up in your life that are in alignment to your desire. So, you know, we were talking about ideal clients. We want them kind and generous and have money and great referrals and good communicators. And maybe today you met a potential client and that didn't work out. At the end of the meeting, it was like, no, it wasn't right for them. But most people would come home and do what with that day? 
What would they say? Oh, that didn't work out. Oh, uh, that didn't work out. Something negative. Yeah, I'm what negative. That was a waste of time. God, I went all the way downtown and met this person, and they didn't work out. I hate when that happens. So as they're complaining and worrying and talking about what they didn't like, are they including it in their vibrational bubble? Yeah. Sure. Yes. So what I'm going to be teaching you to do more, what I'm teaching you right now, is to celebrate how close the match was. Right. So what's one thing you could do, just pretending, what's one thing you could do now coming home from that meeting? What? So make some stuff up that you could celebrate. You could say that was such a delightful conversation, and maybe that person will send me a referral. Yes, and here's what I liked about them. Yeah. You know, they were good communicators. Is that on my list? Oh, yeah, look, I'm getting close. Uh, we'll just say she she was a good communicator. She was very well connected. She asked. She was very polite. She asked good questions. She kept the appointment. She kept the appointment. She arrived on time. She even bought me coffee. How abundant am I? So in other words, celebrate how close that was. And then when it's not a match, you know what you can tell yourself? We weren't a match. See how you don't have to blame anybody and complain and go on and on and on? Right. The, the simple answer is we're not a match. Now, I know lots of people in direct sales, they... You know, they get pretty sad and hung up when they don't have a match and they end up getting into that little negative spiral about going on and on and on about how it wasted their time and they keep attracting. Well, now you can hear it in their vibration why they keep attracting more of the same. So when you come home and you're thinking, okay, that was a good meeting. It wasn't a match, but boy, am I ever getting close. Look, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like that myself. I love to celebrate and I think, wow, am I ever getting good at lining up my energy? I've lined my energy up so well that I've included eight of the 12 things that would make an ideal client. I love that. I created that. That I match my vibration. Now, because it wasn't a perfect match, it means I need to do some tweaking. Now, maybe when you come home from the meeting, you, um, uh, you experience some contrast that you didn't put on your contrast list. What would you do with that new piece of contrast? Add it to your list. Yeah. So you'd say, okay, you know what, I didn't put this on my list, but, you know, I, I really got connected with this person, and then I found out that they're moving to Japan. It's like, oh, I wish I would have known that, because my ideal client is in the States or Canada, or I'm just making this up, or whatever right. that might be. So you're thinking, okay, I better go back to my list. You don't have to redo the whole contrast or clarity list, but just add it to the bottom and say, okay, they, you know, they're from another country. What do you want? I want them to live in my city, if that's true for you. You see how you didn't dwell on it, but you yeah. used it long enough to convert it. So good, now I'm going, to, I'm going to goose up my desire list by putting that on it. And they said, there, I've lined up my energy. Good. Let's hear some comments about this whole concept of uh, matching and celebrating the match and acknowledging how close you are. Did somebody have an appointment today, did they say? No. No. This is Melanie. Yes. I was scheduling, calling to schedule an appointment for next week, and um, the owner of the business, I was asking for a particular um, technician, and um, that person no longer works there, and it was also going to be the owner, the business owner's birthday, so she was going to assign me to someone else, and, you know, I was telling her happy birthday when it comes and so on and so forth and telling her that my birthday was going to be the following week. Then she says to me, well, on Wednesdays we're offering a special. And I will be available on Wednesdays, so you can have me for two hours. So I was like, yes, wow. <laughs> I am excited. Yes. Put me in. So what matched? It What matched the what fact ma that... um. I'm able to work directly with her. Very good. And we I have that. two hours of her time instead of being assigned to someone else for one hour. Okay, two hours of her time. What else yes. is she? Pardon? Tell me more about her energy and her communication. Um, very upbeat, very positive. Are these all on your list? Upbeat. Yes. See how good you're getting? You, I mean, you just shifted your vibration. I mean, it's probably good anyway, but you shifted your vibration. And now, so that's what I want everyone to get in the habit of is, not just saying, oh, that was a good meeting. It's like, wow, this is really good. Am I ever doing a good job? I just go on rampages. I really, 
you know, really get in the habit of keeping score. I'd like you to write this down. I'm a scorekeeper of matches. I'm a scorekeeper of matches. Now, it was interesting last night after I did my presentation and everybody was just blown away and, you know, they had so much fun. I had, and I was signing books, sold lots of books and Sandy was busy selling stuff and people were coming out to me and, and two people came out to me two different times to ask me about speaking engagements and said, would you be interested in coming to do a speaking engagement? Well, you know, I've been doing it for a couple of years now, so do you suppose I've uncovered contrast in the last couple of years? Uh-huh. Yes. So I really know what kind of questions to ask. And I said, well, tell me more about your event. And she said, well, there will be 20 of us. So that's all I needed to hear. <laughs> and she said, we're going to be at the Fairmont in Calgary. And she said, you know, we can put you up in a nice suite and... And um, she said, we don't really have a budget, but you can sell your products there. And I'm thinking, "Mm, no. (laughs) So instead of dwelling on that, I said, okay, I love that. I love staying at the Fairmont in Calgary. And I love that I was being asked. And I love that she saw a perfect fit for me and so on. And the parts that didn't match, I just said, no, I've done that before. I've done when they didn't have a budget. And then I come to find out the 20 people going were 20 couples. So guess what, uh, 10 couples don't buy two books each. (laughs) So I'd be going there to sell 10 books. I can do that uh, over the telephone in one hour. And then I had another woman come up who um, she said uh, she uh, it's something to do with the Woodworkers Association of Alberta, and she said they're having a conference, and she said you'd be perfect for this group. So as soon as I heard woodworkers, I thought of, well, it would be a lot of men, right? And I just said, well, I've had that contrast before. So I asked her, I said, so why do you think that they'd be interested in this subject? She said, well, they're all entrepreneurs. A lot of them are, you know, husband and wife owner business. And and she said, I think they'd really like your message. She said, we're expecting between 100 and 150 people, and it's going to be in this little remote town. I don't even know where it's at, but it's in B.C. And I'm thinking, oh, I, I'll only go to a city if it has an airport. I was thinking, I don't want to be on some chuck wagon going to some somewhere. So I got lots of information for her, and everything matched except for it was in Vermeer. Do you know where that's at, Sandy? In Vermeer. Yeah, in Vermeer. It's on near the Calgary Alberta border. So it's, there's no it, airport in Vermeer. It, it's, yeah. it's up there. Yeah. It's, it's out there. So I thought. Yeah. yeah. So it was pretty close match, but they don't have an airport, <laughs> and I thought. Uh, that's going to be a long haul. But I didn't say no to it either. And she kept saying, so what are your rates and what's your budget? You know, what do you charge? And I said, you know what, just call me and we'll have that conversation over the phone. You know, it was fun. Oh, because I was wondering how you resolved it. Did you do that then and there? Well, the first woman I was really honest with her and I said, you know what, I would be too expensive to come to talk to your group of 20 couples or 10 couples, right? Yeah. She was doing it for the weekend. But I said, I have a better idea, because this woman has been to every Calgary seminar. I don't know if you saw her, Sandy. Her name was uh, Peg. She was a a little uh, tiny woman. And and she said, uh, she's been to all my seminars. She's bought all my stuff. She knows all the answers to the questions. And I said, you don't need me there. I said, why don't you you buy 20 books and and just do a little module on it? And she said, wow, what a great idea. I mean, I had to pull that out of her. So at the end, she didn't even need 20 books. She just bought 10, you know, because couples don't need a book each. So I ended up selling her 10 books without having to go to this. Uh, oh, really? Oh, that was okay. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, but the other woman, I am kind of interested, you know, 125 people get to sell them my stuff, you know, but. The woodworkers and in the. Uh, yeah, the woodworkers. Town. Yeah, the Woodworkers Association. And Alberta is a Canadian province that's on the prairies, kind of. So. Right. There's lots of nothing in between nothing, in between nothing. <laughs> and I don't like to drive, and I don't have a car, so uh, it's not ideal for me. But we'll see. They might helicopter me in. I, don't know. Oh, I can be such a diva, you know. Oh, yeah, you're a diva, all right. I am. <laughs> I know this morning, Sandy and I left uh, Calgary this morning at the same time, and um, we were in... We we had Sandy lives in Vancouver and I live in Victoria, so our flights were different. And hers was at eight, and mine was at ten. And Sandy took a cab, and I had a limo. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Nice Sandy. big black limo pulled up, and I said, 
God, where's Sandy? I'm going to have to have this face all by myself. I know. Oh. Now, have you guys been reading my easing or have subscribed yes. to my easing? Well, Sandy's yes. the one that's in my easing. I know. The uh, picture she comes of with you. She comes with you all the time. Yeah. She she does what? She come, travels with you. Yes. Oh, yeah. She goes all the time. all met her here in Las Vegas. Oh, did you? Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah, it's yeah. In a row there. At the Bellagio, I think. Or maybe at the Bellagio. Or at the White House the last time. The White House, okay. Yeah. Yep. That, that, yeah, we know Sandy. Okay, hi, right. <laughs> I'm, the kind of, I'm the quiet one. I'm the undiva. Yeah. There's only room for one diva. Yeah. And that's totally <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, that was an abundant day that we had. Remember, Sandy? Our, oh, yeah. Our first seminar in Las Vegas was at the Bellagio. Right. Yeah. And that was, was Michael's first time, actually. My first time in the Bellagio, and my head the was... first time in Vegas. He goes to the Bellagio. That's why uh, I, I found that so ironic. Well, a diva hotel for a diva. I know. And then we were outside, and we saw Mary J. Blige. Yeah. Ooh. So that was kind of fun. Okay. Okay, enough about me. <laughs> my friends would say that's impossible, but enough about me. <laughs> So just to recap today, we talked about, you know, the whole second step of the process says to give attention, energy, and focus to your desire. A great way to do that is a desire statement. It allows you to talk about it and go on a little rampage about the way you want. When you do that, it will feel good. You'll pull in the vibration of the way you want it to be. So let's do a little wrap-up here. We have time for about half of you. Let's say three of you. Let's hear something that you got today that you put a little happy face beside or a little star or something like that. Anybody? Go ahead. Um, I think one thing that, because I know I've been to several of your seminars, and one thing that I just got out of this tonight that I didn't realize would be a, a good benefit to do is when you do the Clarity Contrast Worksheet, which we have done quite a bit. We try to do them in our sales meetings every Monday. Yeah. And when you don't have, when you celebrate the closest of the match and you don't go and put those things on there, which you just talked about, yeah. go and add them back to the list. Ah, good. I've never uh, done that before. It's, it's like update your inventory. Uh, it's like uh, updating the list. Yeah. So it's I good. thought that was huge. Okay, good. I'm glad you got that. Thank you. Next. This is Melanie. Thanks, Melanie. I think the the vibrational bubble concept that is an aha for me. Okay. What what part? What did it help what, you understand more? Um, just when you when you were speaking about your current dreams and aspirations, whether they're inside or outside of the bubble. Yeah. And 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 your um, you know, you mentioned about the fist. Using a fist to pull it through. Yeah, so you so you can include it. Very good. Right, right, yeah. right. It's right. a great analogy, isn't it? To help. Yes, it is. To help us understand that. Yes, it Very is. Good. Thank you. I actually have an illustrator drawing that picture for me from my updated book. Mm. <laughs> it's a guy and this bubble around him, and we're trying to figure out how to illustrate it that he's including stuff into his bubble. Very nice. Mm. Good. And one more person. This is Chris. Thanks, Chris. Um, the uh, concept of celebrate how close the match was, um, just really going on a rampage and celebrating that okay. instead of um, instead of the opposite. So I just love that. Okay. And they celebrate how close I was. Yes. Remember, deliberate attraction means doing something deliberately. Do you want to write that down? Deliberate attraction means doing something deliberately. So keeping score and noticing and celebrating and logging, that's all deliberate. So you're a deliberate attractor. Oh, I had lots of fun with you guys tonight. It was fun. It was playful. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, we'll hear from each other for Class 3. Great. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.